Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Forms to create quizzes and tests for your Microsoft Teams classes. So first, you need to visit your Office 365 account, which can be accessed at office.com. This is where you can access all of your Microsoft Office 365 apps. One of them that should display is Forms. This typically displays as one of the, you know, default options, but if it doesn't, for any reason, click on the All Apps button and it, and it will show all of the apps available with your Office 365 subscription. So uh, click on Forms and it will open up the Forms website. And it's going to show all of your quizzes and forms in this area. If this is your first time, you won't see anything here. Now, when you are creating a quiz or a test for your team, your class, on Microsoft Teams, in order to use the uh, assignment feature where you assign this as an actual quiz, you need to create a new quiz, not a new form. Forms, if you need to deliver that to one of your classes, you're just polling them on something, you're going to just use the URL, the share URL, just like you would for any form. For the quizzes, features, and assignment, again, uh, which I'll demo in a, after we create this quiz, you're going to need to collect a new quiz. Um, quizzes are also the only option, if you use form, you won't be able to add points for individual questions. So you need to select quiz in order to do that. So make sure you click on new quiz. And of course, give it a name. And of course, you may want to develop a naming scheme as you develop a large number of these, um, just so you can find it, maybe putting the unit number, etc. So I have a naming scheme, so I identify the course name, and then, um, you know, the if it's a quiz for a particular unit or a test, I include that all in the description so it's easy for me to search them later on, you know, the next year when you go to try to use the same one. Um, you can also add a header image, so that's something you may want to do. As well as there are some different themes that you can select from. Um, there are some newer ones in here if you haven't been in here in a little while. Uh, I typically teach in computer science. I use this one a lot, so all my quizzes are that way. But let's use one of the newer ones here. I liked um, this one looked cool. So um, you can give it a theme if you'd like. Um, and then, of course, we can add new items to the test. Uh, there, there is, a again, a header image field and a description if you need to provide more details. Um, and once you click Add New Item, you have your different options here. Mainly for quizzes and tests, um, you know, for a class, you're most likely going to use these multiple choice options or the text field options. Um, but there are some other things. For instance, once in a while, I do use a ranking question. Uh, if I need students to order something, put it in a specific order. Um, and if, you know, if you're using this maybe for more of an assignment and not necessarily just a quiz or a test, you could maybe use the file upload, um, you know, question or um, item. So uh, I'm just selecting multiple choice to start off. And of course, uh, as you would expect, you have uh, your question you can type in. You can add an image to support your question or a video. So you can have a video that goes along with your question or an image. Um, you provide the multiple choice options for this. So I'm just going to provide a silly question here just to give us an example. And notice this is how it would kind of look for the students. All I did was click off of the question. And again, you can add an image if you'd like. You can um, also uh, do a Bing image search get an image from your OneDrive, or you can upload it from your computer. Let's see if we can find a picture of me. And here's a nice picture of me. Um, so I was able to find that a Bing image search. So you can find a lot of images that, you know, nice and easily in there, unless it's a custom thing. So um, we have that. And then, of course, you may want to assign points. Some people just like to do each question's worth one point. 
Um, so that adds up to the total number of questions. Maybe there's a point scheme you want. Maybe you want it to total up to 100 points. So depending on the number of questions you have, et cetera, you're going to assign the points values to be different. But each question you can assign a unique uh, point value to. I always check required. It makes the student have to answer the question in order to submit. That is a choice of yours, but I, you know, I always want them to at least attempt it before submitting the quiz. So I just make sure every question is required. Some other things that you can do, um, if you click these three dots, there are some other settings. I always, for instance, shuffle the options. So these don't show up in the same order. Every student has them in a different order or a randomized order. Um, you can make it a drop down option instead of multiple choice bubbles. There are some um, math, if you have a math style question, you can select this to show an equation underneath the question. I'm going to unselect that for now because obviously this isn't a math question. If your question requires multiple uh, answers, you can check this off and notice now it's check boxes instead of a bubble sheet or selecting one answer. And most importantly, you don't want to forget to actually select the correct answer. And to do that, you check, click this little check mark and that shows the correct answer. For multiple answers, again, you'd select the multiple correct answers and students would have to select both of them in order to get credit for this uh, task. So uh, we have that selected. You can duplicate questions. So if you have similar questions repeating over and over, instead of having to type out all this stuff, you can just click duplicate here. You can reorder questions with these arrows. And of course, the little trash can will delete a question for you. Now, text questions, notice I selected text this time. Uh, again, you can type a question. What is my last name? And um, what you can do is, uh, if you select long answer, the student can just type in. This is like an essay style question, so a nice long answered question. And the student can type in a response. You would need to review it to assign points because a long answer question cannot be auto graded. If it's a short answer question, just a one word thing like this, what's my last name, um, you can add correct answers and it will attempt to auto grade it. Um, so you can type that in and now it will, it will see that as a correct answer. Note that it's not case sensitive, so it will uh, mark correct um, zone with a lowercase m and capital M, so it will mark that correct. Um, be careful here with math responses. You may want to add multiple correct answers, you know, depending on the precision of uh, the student's response, um, you know, if there's decimal points, etc. So I usually add for anything that's a math response a number of possible correct answers. And of course, it's useful to review the questions uh, after the students submit them, just in case they submitted something that you would accept as an answer. So um, we can, we're all set with that. Again, some options. Uh, we can do some restrictions also on word ones. So for instance, we can restrict it so they can only type in a number. You have greater than a certain response, less than, etc. Between these two values, again, very helpful for math responses because you say from this value to this value. Um, so there are some options there to, to restrict their responses also. And um, so you can do that. Um, again, if it's a math one, I always select that it's a restriction of they have to put in a number, then they don't just, you know, type something or say, I don't know, whatever it may be. Um, so you can do that. You can have pick image again, etc. Notice I can move, you know, reorder these questions with these arrows. Now, the other thing I like to do is let's go up to the three dots in the top right here. This is the settings for our entire quiz or test. And um, here are some options there. Show results automatically. You may want to turn this off. For instance, I, for end of unit tests, I turn this off just in case students don't take it at certain times. Quizzes, I leave it on because I want the students to meet, receive immediate feedback um, so they can continue to learn from their mistakes. End of unit tests, I turn this off so students don't take pictures of the correct answers or whatever that may be. Um, so this is where you can turn that on and off. Only people in my organization, this is on by default and it records their name and they can only submit one response. For whatever reason, you don't want this to be that way, you can change it. But most likely, if it's a quiz or a test, you're only going to want one response per person. You're going to want to record their name, and it's only going to be people that are in your team. Um, 
The thing that I wanted to show off is the shuffle questions. I always turn this on also so that it takes all the questions and it puts them in a random order. This is another thing that helps. So each student gets the questions in a different order. Again, prevent another helpful little trick to help prevent cheating, et cetera, when we randomize things a little bit. All right, so let's say you've completed your quiz. Notice the total amount of points displays at the top. So two points because I made each question worth one point each. Let's just so I can show you that that changes, let's make the each one worth five points. All right, notice now it's worth 10 points, this, this quiz. Um, and then that's it. It saves, it auto saves as you're working through it. Um, you can preview it to just see what it looks like on the student end. So this is what the student would see. They'd have to select their response. Uh, they'd have to type in, uh, I left this on, must be a number. So actually this is a great thing. This is why I preview it when I'm done. Cause then you find the mistakes you've made. So I'm going to go back and say, Oh, this is actually not supposed to be a number. Let's turn off that restriction. I'll go back to preview. Immersive reader is enabled on forms. That's another great thing about it. So I can, uh, turn on immersive reader and it will read them the question. Um, so for your students that may need the immersive reader, now your quiz has that built right in. Fantastic. Great addition by Microsoft. Um, so uh, once, once you're done with that, you can just go right over to your team. And uh, it's stored under your account. So if you go to create and you say you want a quiz, it searches all your Microsoft forms and will display them here. Uh, your most recent ones will display at the top. So I just created this one. So it's notice it's displaying right here, but um, you can search for them also. And that's what I meant by have a good naming scheme so you can easily locate your files. You may notice I have CSE 10th grade uh, and, and I have a numbering scheme for these things. This helps me locate the files a lot quicker. All you do is uh, you can click on and uh, select the particular quiz you want. It automatically adds it here. And what's great about the way Microsoft Teams handles this versus if you just shared the URL is it actually communicates with forms to set up some things. For instance, we can assign a due date and that due date will affect the form also. If you go into and you, I clicked this little edit underneath the due date, and it also you know, limits who can have access, so only this class will have access to it. If I click edit under the due date, I can schedule for this to assign. And what that does is the date you set for this, the, the quiz, if some a student got a hold of the URL for whatever reason, um, so not only will it not post until this assigned date in Teams, it won't open, the quiz won't open until this assigned time. And then you can also set a closing date and I always set the closing date and time for the end of the period where students cannot submit responses after that certain time. And of course, you can go in and you can open it by changing it and let students take it later on. So you can go and do that. Now, a lot of the times what I do afterwards, after a student, you know, maybe was absent a day, I'll reassign it and you can go in and you can just assign it just to certain students if you want. And, um, and then it will assign that quiz only to those students. So retakes, et cetera, I assign it to specific students, not the entire class. Once you click assign, it's gonna distribute that form to the students. Let me go over to my student account. And um, we have uh, EdTech Joe's test available on the student account. Click inside. Notice it shows the form. And when they click on it, it loads the form right inside of Teams for them to answer. Notice it randomized the responses. So this was actually question two when I designed it. And uh, now it is question number one because it randomized my responses. Obviously, it's a little more difficult to see because I only added two things. And let's get this one wrong. I can click Submit. And then it's gonna, if you allow them to view the results, it's gonna allow them to click view results and they can see what they got right and wrong right there. So quick, immediate feedback. And that's what I use this primarily for. I want my students to receive immediate feedback on this um, type of you know, quiz. And that's what's great about it versus you know, using your worksheets or other assignments. Now on the teacher end, when you go into it, you'll notice you can see your students' results. All your students will display here. When they complete it, it will say turned in. It will show 
um, their score out of the number of points. You can give some feedback if you'd like. If you click on the response, you can actually see that individual student's response also, and you can see how they did. And if you feel like you made a mistake or you'd like to give them points for their response, depending on what it was, you can always edit the number of points. And notice now that the student got a 10 out of 10, and I edited that particular answer. All right, so that's it. Um, I hope you enjoy creating quizzes and tests using Microsoft Forms. Um, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. Also, let me know if you have any other topics you'd like me to cover. And don't forget to click that subscribe button below.